The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each one of you. I'm Father Mike Dandaran, the pastor at Holy Trinity Parish in Assumption, Ohio. And right behind me, the most significant event of your life takes place each day here and every weekend. We're about to journey for six weeks into fellowship, into getting deeper into the scripture of the upcoming Sunday, as well as studying and discussing parts of the holy sacrifice of the Mass so that each time we gather, we get more out of the Mass. The drama of every Mass echoes the drama of our own lives. I want to share with you the significance of the Mass and how it supports, inspires, and encourages us through the dramas of our life. Because of our being away from our faith, I accepted um, an invitation from a friend to attend a service nearby my home and just was blown away by what I encountered, uh, a deep love for Christ um, and, a, and a deep sense of um, belonging from those people, but I could not get past the entertainment portion of their service. Um, I came on a perhaps special day that was not their normal routine, but they played games for prizes in their sanctuary and, and threw little miniature footballs uh, with the church name on it. Um, and I just, I couldn't reconcile that with what I knew we should be doing. Um, even if we were joyful, it seemed like too much. Um, when I arrived, I left my coffee in the car and was greeted to two kinds of fruit infused waters and a full coffee bar. And while I had some, I couldn't help but feel guilty. And at the time, I didn't know why. And it just came down to me as the more I learned and listened and thankfully had an amazing Catholic friend who shared information with me and was there at the right moment uh, to help get me get home. But um, it made me think of Father Mike Schmitz uh, does an incredible series of videos and information and one that I watched that struck home with me so much was he said, um, the heart of all religion is worship. And the heart of all worship is sacrifice, whether it be us as Catholics uh, in old Jewish times, uh, even other religions around the world. That is the basis. The heart of religion is worship and the heart of worship is sacrifice. And I could find no sacrifice. And I couldn't reconcile that with the entertainment uh, following an experience rather than the reality of our God. And that's what brought me even closer to the Mass, was knowing that what we're doing is to worship God, to give to God, not find what we can get. And if we do receive something, a beautiful message in the homily or an inspiring scripture verse that just really meant something to us, that is a bonus, that is wonderful, but that is not what we are here to do. We are here to worship God and give him what he's asked for. Not what we'd like to give, but what he's asking of us. My family, uh, my five siblings, my in-laws, and my mother and I have made the tradition of vacationing in February together. Uh, it's a great experience of spending time with the family. While I have five siblings, and while we were all raised in the Catholic Church, not all of us practice our Catholic faith. I have a sister who was divorced and remarried outside the church. Her and her second husband uh, are very involved in a non-denominational church. And they're very faithful to it. It truly enriches their life as they share it with us. On our va family vacation, though, when it comes to Sunday morning, we're a little divided. My sister and brother-in-law will walk down the street from the house to their non-denominational church on Sunday morning. My mom, my brothers, and I will travel down to the Catholic Church. This past year, at the Catholic Mass at the same church was very much similar to the previous year. It's a packed with people. The church is standing room only. 
It's a very perfunctory mass. The presider recognizes the need to make sure this mass fits within the small window that they have available. There is no music. The preaching is perfunctory. In fact, the same homily was preached that year as it was the previous year. It was the annual appeal for the bishop. It was the holy sacrifice to the mass. By our own omissions to each other, my brothers and I said it wasn't the best mass we ever attended. We went back to the house in which we were staying and we get, were waiting for our sister and brother-in-law to return from their service. They ended up being an hour later than us. And when they came back in, they were so joyful and so excited about what they experienced at their service. They experienced great Bible study. The preacher was fantastic in breaking open the word. They experienced fellowship and connection. They experienced powerful music of worship. Clearly, their experience was far more entertaining than what my brothers and mother experienced at the Catholic Mass. Why is it that the Protestant service and non-denominational services seem to be more entertaining? I propose to you this. The holy sacrifice of the Mass is not designed for entertainment. The holy sacrifice of the Mass does not have the same objective or goals that the other services might offer. When we gather for this holy sacrifice of the Mass, we have to remember two very important things. When we gather for the Mass, it is not a man-made construct. We are worshiping as God has prescribed. The eternal God, whom we are to give worship, he alone instructs us on how to worship him. Go back to the Old Testament. Read about the worship of the Israelites. When it came time for that first Passover meal, that first worship of God, God gave through, to the Israelites through Moses a very precise, prescriptive way of worship. What to do exactly with the blood, when to eat the flesh, what prayers to be spoken. God gave them the way in which he desired to be worshipped. It wasn't created by man. So for to us in the New Testament, Jesus, on the night before he died, he gave to us the prescription of how we are to worship him until the end of time, when he took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to us and said, take and eat. And he blessed the wine. And he said, this is my blood poured out for you. Drink of it. And then he said, do this in memory of me. This is how we are prescribed by God to worship. When you come for the holy sacrifice of the mass, do not expect innovation, human, human, human creativity. The second part of that, when we gather for the holy sacrifice of the mass, what we're doing has eternal consequence. Because when we gather for the holy sacrifice of the mass, we're not remembering. We are literally entering into the moment of our Lord's Paschal mystery. His Paschal mystery is made present to us once again. The Paschal mystery of his suffering his death at Calvary, and his resurrection. And what did his Paschal mystery offer to all of humanity? It offered the forgiveness of sin. It was through his suffering at Calvary that the gates of heaven would be thrown back open again, that the sinner could be reconciled, that the path to his eternal home may be once again made ready for us. That's what happened at Calvary 2,000 years ago. And when we pray the Mass... That's what's happening in that moment again. Souls, through the sacrifice of the Mass, are coming home to heaven through the mercy of Jesus. It doesn't matter how good or how bad the music is. It doesn't matter the length of the service. It doesn't matter whether the homily was inspired or not. What matters is that we worship as God has prescribed so that his work of Calvary can make a difference 
in the souls at that moment. That's why we gather. And sometimes when we gather for the Mass, maybe the Mass, the drama of the Mass, is that reminder that just as he suffered and died at Calvary and God brought forth good, so too when we suffer, when we experience an individual personal death, that God can bring forth something good from it. The holy sacrifice of the Mass not only allows souls to enter into heaven, but it reminds us that the drama of our life can find greater meaning and connection as we unite it to the passion of our Lord Jesus. I invite you with your small groups to reflect on a few questions that are provided. But in addition to that, how does the sacrifice of the Mass connect to the drama of your life? How has it helped to bring understanding to suffering? Share with each other how the joy of the resurrection is made evident through the Mass and then made evident in your own lives. Thank you for joining me on this six-week journey as we grow in fellowship with one another, as we reflected on the Sunday Gospel, and as we try to understand more deeply the significance of the holy sacrifice of the Mass. We'll see you in church.